Hello and welcome back to another episode of our Mercedes Sprinter camper conversion. I hope you've all had a good week. We have weather's not the best today but we're still out doing some work on the van. Today we're going to be starting the electrics on our van. Probably going to be splitting this over a couple of videos as there's quite a lot to get through. The first stage that we're going to be looking at today is getting the wires from the solar panels down inside the van connecting it into our solar charge controller and then connecting the batteries up connecting all those together. So if you haven't already seen our previous video, we've done an installation video of our solar panels on the roof. We now have the second solar panel up there as well. As we have two solar panels, there's two different ways that we can connect these together. The first way is in series and the second way is in parallel. The differences between these two, in series the voltage of the solar panels is added together with the current staying the same and in parallel the, the voltage stays the same but you increase the current. Our solar charge controller that we've gone for prefers to have a higher voltage coming into it so what we've decided to do is to join our solar panels together in series. What this effectively means is you'll be taking a positive from one solar panel, connecting it to the negative of the other solar panel and then the positive from one panel and the negative from the other come down inside the van and join into the char charge controller. We'll be showing you all this once we're up on top of the van uh, but we just thought we'd give you a quick, a quick description on how we're going to be doing that. So the first thing that we need to do is to join the two solar panels together and what we're going to be using for that is one of these MC4 connectors down here. What an MC4 connector effectively is, is a connection that you can make so these two connection here, pieces here join together, clip together and it means you can easily disconnect them. So we'll be adding these onto the positive and negative from each solar panel and then clipping those together. So let's get up on the roof of the van and go and do that. So as you can see we've now got both panels installed on the roof, a little bit of water on them today, it has been raining, but you can also see that we've got the wires coming from them down here, so we've got our positive and negative running from each of the panels. So we'll be having a positive and negative, positive from one panel, negative from the other that will be running down inside the van, and then the other wires that will be joining, we'll be joining those up just here joining those with that MC4 connector to get them all connected up. So as you can see now I've connected, I've cut the wires and I've added a connector onto the end of the positive cable of one panel and the negative cable of the other panel. So they're ready to go. Slipped over the connection nut just here. Now what I need to do is to push these to the end this is the positive one as it's slightly narrower and you have the negative one as well which is this one just here so it pushes up into this end when you push it up in you hear a click that when that's when you know that it's joined up in and then you screw the nut onto the end of here and it pulls it in nice and tight so we now have the wires from the solar panel coming down inside the van We've used a grommet on the roof, which is currently sat under this bag, just drying. We've put some Seeker Flex under there. We've also got a network cable coming down inside as well, which we'll be using for our Wi-Fi and our 3G. If you haven't seen the video on, on how we're connecting to the internet in the van, check out the video that we'll be putting a link to in the top of here. So this is now coming down inside the van. Obviously, it'll be routed down to where our batteries are. And at the moment, it's just connected in to the solar charge controller just in the points here. So the next job that we're going to be doing is connecting the two leisure batteries together. We'll be connecting these in parallel. So we'll be connecting the positive and positive together and then the negative and negative together. Obviously this is different to the uh, solar panels because we don't want to be increasing the voltage so we don't want to go up to 24 volts. We want to keep it at 12 volts, but we want to share the current, so that's why we're going in parallel for the leisure batteries. So to connect the leisure batteries together, we're going to be using some of this fairly heavy gauge wire. This red stuff here. Uh, this is 35 mil squared wire, suitable to carry the kind of current that we're going to be having out of the batteries. It's quite a decent bit of wire in there, as you can see, quite a nice bit of copper. So we've connected onto one end already, one of the battery terminals, onto this end, and then we'll be doing the same with the negative. So we've now made our jumper wire, which has got both terminals on either end, as you can see here. 
One really important thing that you need to remember is having these cable covers, just these terminal covers here. Obviously when you're connecting two batteries together, well, when you're connecting any batteries together you really want to make sure that you're, you're covering your terminals over as you don't want anything bridging your two terminals. You definitely don't want to kick off these two batteries. So the next plan is now to join the two positive terminals together using this jumper wire. To mount all the components we've added a piece of plywood just in on the back underneath the bed. We're going to be pushing the batteries up against these and then all of the electrical components, so uh, solar controller, all the buzz bars, all of the fuses will be mounted to this backboard. Just makes it nice easy access if we ever need to come out and change anything and they're not hidden under cupboards. Uh, so we've now joined the two batteries together. This long wire here now is going to be going into our switch so that we can disconnect the batteries uh, if we ever needed to do anything, any work on the van, on the electrics we can just turn this off and then we're safe in the knowledge that we're not having any power running through it so the so next job is now cutting this wire down and joining in the switch we've now mounted the switch onto the back wall got our positives going into there we've got two coming out there and like I said one for the inverter which we haven't connected yet and then this smaller one is going to be going into a fuse block. So we've got a 200 amp fuse running into here. Obviously fusing is a very important part of any electrical setup. You want your fuses to be as close to your battery as you possibly can. So we'll be putting a fuse onto this one which is going to be going into our buzz bar and into our 12 volt distribution block. And then we'll be putting a larger fuse onto the one going into the inverter. Obviously these are mega link fuses, they go into these housings just here, replaceable by just taking the screws off, slipping the fuse back on, and you've got a little cap then that goes over the top of there. So we'll be fitting that one in next. As part of the install we're also going to be installing this battery monitor from Victron. Same make as our solar charge controller, and actually works quite nicely with it, it's still got Bluetooth built in as well. What this allows us to do is this allows us to monitor the health of the battery, so what voltage we've got in there also allows us to look at the draw of the batteries, how much time we've got remaining based on the current load. As part of that setup you need to install this device here which is called a shunt. What this shunt does is this measures the drop across the battery so this goes on the negative side of your electrics so you connect one side of your negative from your battery here and then all of your load side onto this one just here and then there's a cable that runs from this little black port just here, it's like, looks like a little network cable that runs from here then into the back of your battery monitor and it sends all the data that it needs. So we're now installing that onto the back wall over here. As you can see there's the buzz bar installed. We're just wiring up the negative cables now to connect the terminals from the negative on the battery into the buzz bar. The 12 volt side of the electrics is now done. As you can see we've got our switch running round into the buzz bar and then up into our 12 volt distribution block which has got two wires coming out of it at the moment one going off to a fan we've got up on the roof and then the other one going across over here into our TP-Link 12 volt PoE connector which is connected into our wireless internet that's going on the roof then we've got our solar charge controller over here which is now pulling out charge from the solar panels via this red wire here down into the right hand side of the switch which is then charging the batteries on the negative side we've then got the shunt device here which will be connecting into the battery monitor and then all of our negatives at the moment coming off this buzz bar we are going to be running a ground from the buzz bar out to the side of the van just to make wiring electrics a little bit easier when we're further down inside the van but for now we don't need it. So as you can see from the solar charge controller 
currently on bulk charge which means it's pulling power from the solar panels and putting it into the battery. So we still have a little bit of the neating of the wires to do. We're going to be using some cable clips just to get all the wires nice and straight. We'll be nailing those to the backboard. But everything's nice and spaced out so that we've got a nice bit of room if we ever need to do any work on the electrics or if we want to add any more bits and pieces we can add those in nice and easily. One of the reasons why we went for the Victor, Victron solar controller was the Victron Connect app. What this allows us to do is via Bluetooth on our mobile phones connect into the solar panels and then we can see how the solar panels are performing as you can see at the moment we're pulling 112 watts via the solar panels, 37 volts and a current of 3.2 amps. The charge controller is also in bulk charge mode so it's charging the batteries currently 8.7 amps going into the batteries and a voltage of 13 volts across them at the moment. Obviously once these batteries become charged the state of the charge controller then goes into float which just means it's putting an ample enough charge into the batteries just to keep them topped up without any extra draw on them. So it's a really handy device to be able to keep an eye. You can also go into the history up here and you can see over the last 30 days how your solar panels have performed, what draw they've been taking out of the sun. So yeah, really, really pleased with this. So the other device that we've got is the battery monitor which goes into the negative part of the shunt and this allows us to monitor the state of the batteries as you can see we've got 12.97 volts 12.9 as the solar charge controller is charging them up so we'll be able to have this device inside the van and you can scroll through and there's various different readouts on here it tells you based on current load how long you've got left on your batteries state of the charge of the battery how many amp hours you're pulling out and various other handy metrics you've got on there but you can also just like you can with the charge controller connect into it via Bluetooth on your mobile phone so again you can see the state of the battery how many volts and again just like the charge controller you can go into history there's some really interesting readouts on here to see how much power you've been using over the last 30 days so you can monitor your usage just to make sure you're not going to run your batteries down you can also set up alarms on this battery monitor so that you don't want your batteries to drop below 50% with AGM batteries or any lead battery. Dropping it below 50% can really damage the battery so you can set up alarms on here just to alert you as to when you're getting close to that level. So that's now the end of the 12 volt side of the electrical setup. As I said we've got a little bit more tidying up of the wires to do but from a 12 volt perspective all we'll be doing now is into the distribution block up in there in the top corner. We'll be connecting all of our 12 volt appliances, we'll be running cables throughout the van, connecting them back to that 12 volt distribution block, adding in some blade fuses, and then they'll be powered from the leisure batteries and the charge controller. So that's the end of the 12 volt setup inside the van. Remember if you do have any comments, if you do want us to go over any more bits that we've done in the van, if you want any, any more information on any of the components we put in, we will be putting a full list of all of the components that we've bought in the description below, so go check those out. Again, thank you very much for everyone that has subscribed to our channel already. If you haven't already done so, remember to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you are liking these videos. We really like to see those thumbs up. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and see you again soon. Bye.